A very good evening, good afternoon, good morning, uh, depending on where from where you're watching this video. So in this session, in this session, we'll be discussing about the how do we check for MRCOG1 eligibility? So myself, I'm Dr. Ramyusri. I'm an, I am one of the mentor in the med exam experts for the part one, right? So I will be trying to guide you. How do we check for MRCOG1 eligibility? And how do we, um, you know, how do we apply for MRCOG? And how we help you through this MRCOG part one to be selected? Okay, so all those points I'll be speaking in this video. So, you know, I think this is a wonderful uh, and most required video. Many times when we are, when we always have this question key, how do we apply? And during application also, we have so many doubts and uh, so many queries will be there. So all that can be corrected by this, by this video. So I'll be trying to help you the maximum how we can help in this video. Okay. So first thing is that you have to first create an account or sign up for the RCOG website. So first you have to create an account or so the you have to make your email ID as well as you have to set up a password, right? So once you create an account, and a setup on the RCOG website. So you can go to the RCOG website, www.rcog.com. So once you go to the RCOG website, try to first make an account or sign up. Once you get your RCOG number, then there you go for the MRCOG part one and download the eligibility form. So you will get one eligibility form from the RCOG website and you have to fill that and you have to email. So this is the eligibility application form. But first and foremost, you have to create your own account. That is the most important. So once you create your own account by giving a, you know, a sign up, uh, you have, and this account after you create, when you get the RCOG college number, that is very important. You should never lose that RCOG number or the college, uh, RCOG college account number. Because with this number only, you will be applying further for the second and third also part two and part three also you'll apply with this number itself, okay? So once you download the eligibility application form, you will have something like this. So write what is your last name, first name, you know, gender, date of birth, medical qualification, may, what is your registration country? Followed by your registration number. See, every, of, every one of us will have a medical registration number like, you know, uh, if you are an Indian or if you are from Pakistan. So every one of us have, have a medical registration number, right? So you have to put that medical registration number and you write your primary medical qualification, whether you are MBBS or whether you are done uh, MS in OPGYN or DN, uh, you have, or whether you have qualified and finished your OPGYN. Now, very important here is you don't require to hold a degree of OPGYN to give part one you don't require to get a degree of OPGYN to get a part one. So my suggestion is, while you're finishing your MBBS, your preliminary first MBBS, final year you have finished and you have finished your internship. So you get your MBBS degree. After MBBS degree, during that time, or once you enter the OPGYN, so during that time itself, you finish off your part one. So that you can finish your part two and part three in your after you finish your MBBS after you finish your OPGYN entire three years, but you can finish off your part one in the first year itself, right? So part two, also you can, fin you can write as soon as you finish your part one. So your part one and part two, you can finish off during your three years course of OPGYN itself. You don't require the entire degree of OPGYN for doing part two and part three, part one and part two. But for part three, you will require that three years of uh, fellows, your four years, complete four years of training and you have to send the assessment of training. So your four years of training, you should have a certificate for that from wherever you have trained. So three years of your OPGYN medical college 
and uh, one year wherever you work so take that four years and then you have to send for the rcog and once they check your assessment of training then you'll allow then they'll allow you from the part 3 so part 1 and part 2 you can complete prior itself that's what i'm trying to say so if you have finished your mbbs that is the right time to start your part 1 so because anyway you're fresh from all the 19 subjects and part 1 mainly compiles of the 19 subjects so part 1 you can give as soon as you finish your mbbs okay yeah, any, it doesn't mean only after you finish MBBS, any time is good time to start the MRCOG, right? Okay, so after that, you have to give your primary medical qualification. What is the university of your primary, primary medical degree? So where you have finished your MBBS, that primary university, because sometimes our MBBS and MS or DNB or MD is not from the same college. So same, same university. So university of your primary medical degree, Country, which country you have passed out, okay? Yes, if you have any queries, feel free to ask. You have any queries, you can ask. Okay. So any one of you, uh, while I'm describing, if you have any queries, always feel free to ask. This is basically 100% to help you how to apply the, and how, what is the eligibility form and how to explain you what is this part one, okay? So next coming to the, uh, you have to describe your ethnicity and uh, nationality, your religion or belief and uh, if any disability. So this is like self-explanatory. So these are the eligibility forms you have to uh, finish. And then you have to do the signature and date. Now basically all this, how are you going to submit this? So how do you submit this eligibility form is once you take a printout of this, you can write all this and scan back. You have to do a scan and you can put it in the email and you also have to scan your medical registration certificate and that also you have to send for the, you have to send email for part one. Yeah, so I have uh, Mohammed telling medical eligible uh, license number is not available. Yeah, I think you uh, you have to have your medical license number. Only after that you can apply this. So don't write not yet. You just wait for your medical license number and then you write it and then you sem uh, send it. Okay, after you send your eligibility today, You'll, in four weeks, you will get back the response. So it is not like an immediate response. But after you send your eligibility, you will get a mail response that thank you for filling it. So you have to send two things here. You have to send two things. One is this eligibility form. Second, you have to send your registration, your medical degree certificate also. So both of them. Uh, Salma, did you did you send? to the email, this is the email which you have to attach. So you have to compose a mail to part one eligibility assessment. You have to compose a mail telling part one in your uh, subject, you have to write part one eligibility assessment application and you insert your college number which they have provided you. Then you have to attach the completed form, scan copy of the complete attached form and scan copy of your original primary degree certificate, okay? After that, when you send, you have to send the mail to email to part one eligibility at the rate rcog.org.uk. So as soon as you have done this, you will get an automatic response telling, thank you for submitting. After that, whether you your eligibility is accepted or not accepted will come after four weeks. So I'm asking, you will did you get just a response, automatic response? Yes. He, you have applied. Uh, your voice is disconnecting, Salma. Yeah. So no problem, Salma. You again repeat doing this. This is simple. So first, all of you guys, this uh, just... First, what you do is you have to get your RCOG number. First is sign up. So once you got your RCOG number, 
this is the email to which you have to put the mail so please see the email type you have to type it correct part 1 eligibility at the rate or cog dot org dot uk theek hai after you put this subject should be part 1 eligibility assessment application part 1 eligibility assessment application and then scan copy of this completed form and scan copy of your primary degree certificate and then you should get a automatic reply response from them ki thank you for submitting and they'll give you what are the next steps to follow so after you put yes uh, no, so nargis is telling you you can check it in the spam also sometimes yes it might go for spam so after the application is complete you have to wait 4 weeks before they tell you whether you are eligible for this exam or not eligible for this exam so you don't get an immediate response ki you can apply or you can't apply so first you have to wait for almost 4 weeks for you to get and uh, uh, you have to write all these properly you know so that once we send we get the appropriate response okay so they give us also everything here in the rcog website uh, uh, so better so I, you have to describe your ethnicity as asian or asian british like whether you are bangladeshi british ya indian or pakistani next you have all other ethnic groups you have to just put a tick in whichever you are appropriate for and then you have the nationality also you have to put the you have to uh, this you have to put which one you want to choose for the nationality then the religion so whether you have this you have any disability or no that is the other column right so this is how we fill the form any doubts in filling the form guys any doubts in the filling in the form please feel free for uh letting me know if you all so all of you understood how to fill form okay that's a very good question basan yes so i'll also answer for that okay so now we have filled the form and we are waiting for the confirmation during you wait for the confirmation try to try to prepare for your exam you almost require 5 to 6 months to complete this entire pro, uh, you know it's ideal to have at least 5 months or 6 months for your preparation so that you will be perfect because we are going to discuss all the 19 subjects pertaining to opgai so we have to read anatomy pertaining to opgai and physiology pertaining to opgai and biochemistry uh, pertaining to opgai so it is a little long process so you require proper 5 to 6 months for preparation so during this time you it's better always to join any of the join the um you can join any coaching so that you know it will benefit you i'll tell you how our coaching med exam will help you all so once you receive the confirmation you have to then put the expression of interest so then you have to again go back to the rcog website and you should put the expression of interest ki i want to take this exam and once the booking tokens are open you can book your exam right so you first do this process so that you can put the expression of interest as well as you can apply it so 4 to 5 months is a good time to prepare for mrcog 1 so now if you start it's a good time for you to finish your preparation because jan you are going to give the exam so now it is october october november december of 3 to 4 months that's more than enough so you it's better not to do late anymore so for your exam it's better to start now okay now how do we help you in this entire process with our course in the med exam that also i'm going to speak so we are going to have yes iphone 3 Uh, expression of interest will be given only after your eligibility is approved you cannot give expression of interest prior to that so first your eligibility should be approved then you can put the interest it's always uh, better to apply for the eligibility at the earliest no so uh, i mean you can you can first apply now for the eligibility so your eligibility is there 
whenever you want to apply you can aram se apply so even if you are applying for your going for july exam start your fill the eligibility form and all and give your expression of interest okay so once your eligibility is approved no that is valid for a whenever you want to apply you can apply so it will be valid no after submitting expression of interest you will not get any mail you will not get any mail they'll uh, you will directly when the booking token will be open that time you will get a mail telling that your booking token is open so kindly book from the website karke so after submitting expression of interest you don't get uh next i have one more query here details about training which is needed for part 3 okay so i once again so part 1 and part 2 your mbbs certificate is enough part 3 they will just take they will see that you have worked under institutions and usually you should take a signature from the mrcog already uh, who have passed out mrcog it's always more better to take a signature from part 3 assessment of training from them so normally whichever medical college you have done your 3 years degree that will be enough followed by one year you can either do continue in the same medical college and even a corporate sector also if you are working one year that's also fine but it's always better to work under those people who have already done mrcog you know signature of them uh, is usually what you have to take for assessment of training those who have completed mrcog part 3 so that is what i'm speaking for four years it is it is a uh four years certificate right so good salma you got it in the spam i think thanks to nargis yeah so shanas you are three years of pg period will be there right so one year you do somewhere you know you can continue one year in the same college or one year you can work in any hospital whichever you want so that becomes four years and then you can send i didn't understand your query aisha so no so married done uh, your eligibility form your eligibility form is already there so just uh, book the expression of interest and then you will get a booking token so you can uh, you can just apply back so you don't require to again and again send for eligibility form once you got the mail that you are eligible for this exam that's enough okay so you can just apply a book the expression of interest and then you apply so normally you will two like after two years of pg training uh, aisha i think there is something called mjit mjit is a training in uk itself but again you'll have three years of training in uk and uh, for that also uh, i don't i really actually don't know the entire process how do we go through that but there is something called mjit you can just have a google or uh, so where you can go to uk for the training but uh, that also is possible only after part 2 after you finish part 2 yes diksha after part 1 and part 2 you that is only i'm telling you can go for a training in uk and then you complete your part 3 that is possible that is what aisha is also asking so after part 1 and part 2 you can do that way right yes so any other queries so anybody who didn't get the uh, 
reply back from them so you can always check for the check in the spam ki whether you have applied your your submission has been accepted by them or not whether you got that autom automatic response or not so all of you are clear any other doubts please feel free to ask so in today's session apart from this i also planned you know i also planned one small uh, way how do we how we can analyze the pedigree so that also i'll be discussing now before we start with that i will tell you what are we going to give in the med exam so in the mrcog part 1 our key points we are very organized and we are very student friendly the, and at every point of time you have the help of all we have almost four mentors in this in this set, in this uh, batch every batch to be frank so for 19 subjects we have four mentors and all of them usually help you and uh, so first we have module wise live sessions so first we'll give you the organized uh, timetable ki what our subjects will be covering on which day and usually each session will be lasting for 3 to 4 hours so you get a prior table of that and so you will have the module wise like anatomy live session physiology live session you will have biochemistry live session so module wise first you'll have module wise live sessions and we also have a study group so for example you have joined in the med exam so whatever those all students who have joined in the med exam for that that batch we create a study group for all those students along with the mentors right so daily topic discussion will be there in that study group like now today anatomy anatomy module is there so in anatomy we will give you all the day wise topics and in day wise topics we will discuss those like an anti abdominal wall so that day anti abdominal wall will be discussed next day pelvis is discussed so daily topic discussions will be there in the study groups yes you can always put you just have to tag us you can daily interact with us we are always available to you in that study group so any queries any question which you are facing it difficult so we'll have you will have daily interaction with us right now after completion of one module like we have finished anatomy so we have discussed day wise topics you have discussed all your queries we have done the live session also so that finishes one subject once we have finished one subject what we will do we will have weekly module tests with explanations so this week anatomy is over so we will have anatomy module weekly module test okay and along with the test you will also have the explanation so that you can find out ki where you have gone wrong or what is the what is something which needs to be corrected so all that we can do by the uh, weekly module test right so after completing all the modules so all the 19 modules after we complete we'll again have revision of all after completing all the modules that will be like a crash course so where we'll be discussing all subjects again okay yes uh, uh ms ba you can uh, you can put forward your query Uh, assalamu alaikum uh, yes. when i am uh, submitting my expression of interest hmm. uh, there is an uh, failed submission failed uh, did you follow the same steps which i have discussed yes i followed all the steps so probably you uh, did you scan both your eligibility form as well as uh, uh, your uh, mbbs degree certificate Uh, i have to submit it with expression of interest uh, i have eligibility has... okay you have the eligibility what did yeah. what is failed it has come your uh, eligibility the... of expression uh, expression of interest they are saying of uh, uh, submission failed so probably you will actually have the time time limit uh, for the expression of interest and uh, once just check whether you have put the expression of interest for the june session or you have put it for the jan session uh, how can i check that just a second so if you go for the rcog website 
I think the time limit for expression of interest is over. That's the reason why you're getting that. Uh, it's 14th October, I guess. One second. I'm just opening to find out where, where it went wrong. Sometimes even your internet also is something which will, uh, you know, uh, will uh, uh, show that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just speak about your query uh, in some time. I'm just checking where it would have been going, going wrong. Okay. Uh, right. Yes. So expression of interest. So did you write your college account number? Yeah, I write. So college account number, you have to give your correct email address. That to your email address should match with the email address with which you have registered in the RCOG. Yeah. And your first name and surname. And then you have to just press, I confirm the, I would like to take an opportunity. Yeah. Yes, and I, I confirm my details. Steps. I did and all the steps. And they uh, said test failed check. Uh, so somewhere it went wrong. Something you would have written wrong. That is what I can expect because if uh, either your first name or surname is not matching what you have done uh, before, uh, we will just help you out. You can also, you know, um, our, our team also will help you actually. If any, uh, once you try it again, if it doesn't, okay. if it if it is not coming, our team will help you out. Okay. Yeah. I may I send the picture to any member of your team. Yes, yes. So we have Mafia and Asma both in this session. You can just, uh, Asma or Mafia, can you just help her? Yeah. Hi, Dr. May. Yes, uh, Dr. Misma, you can just drop us a message. Our team members will definitely help you out. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aisha, let's hope for the best that your expression of uh, inter your eligibility will come before 14th October. So that is why it's always best to, you know, put your eligibility uh, eligibility before itself. Like even if you're writing for June or anything, you have to better put your eligibility now itself, right? So fingers crossed for you. Okay, any other query guys? Anybody else? So you can always ask all your queries. I'm there with you for another one hour. So any other queries also, if you get in between, you can definitely ask me. I am there to help you out. And our team is also there to help you out. Right. So after we have the completion of entire all modules, we have a mock exam. So after that, we will just focus on most important and you know past papers. And then again, we'll have a big mock exam. So are you understanding that we are going to revise our entire subject almost first during the class and then by, with weekly tests. And then you have one mock exam and then again, you have a mock exam. So before you go, go to your actual exam, we almost have two mocks and weekly tests. So that way we are going to help you out in drilling the subject as well as assimilating it and digesting it in a complete way. Right. Yes. So in your chat, in, in your chat box, we have the WhatsApp number also. So anybody is facing any eligible, any difficulty in the eligibility, you can just drop a message there and uh, they'll help you out. Okay. And we have Mafia also telling us that, uh, so there is no like part one and part two, you're completed and then you have to, you get, uh, you can get into MRCUG or PLAP. It's not possible that way. You have to either finish the entire part, all the three parts and get the degree of MRCUG or you have to do PLAB and then you can get into uh, UK training, okay? Right. So any other queries, guys? Right. 
so now uh, one topic i'll discuss just to have an understanding like how does these sessions will be there and what will be the different topics we'll have in the exam and uh, how do we discuss and how will be our teaching so just a, a brief and today i chose one difficult topic uh, you know it's always better to start your uh, start your preparation now right so for your preparation, one of the topic which you'll have in the 19 subjects is genetics. Normally, the pedigree analysis is something which is very difficult for the students. So I'll try to just simplify that pedigree analysis today through this session. Okay. So all of you are clear with the eligibility part. Uh, can we go to the pedigree analysis? Right. So normally the type of genetic disorders we have is we either have autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive and we have sex-linked recessive and sex-linked dominant and we also have mitochondrial diseases. So mitochondria, mitochondria is usually from other mitochondria will go to the fetus. So what is something very different about the mitochondrial diseases? Transmitted from mother to child only. Yes. So mitochondria is, go is going to be shared from mother to the fetus. There is no paternal mitochondria. It's only from the mother the mitochondria will go. So mitochondrial diseases will be, go will be transmitting only from mother to the fetus. Father can't transmit any mitochondrial diseases because father doesn't give mitochondria to the fetus. So mitochondrial diseases are transmitted only from the mother to the fetus. Autosomal dominant or recessive. Autosomal is for the 22 chromosomes what we have. Sex linked is when, when, they have, when we have defect in the X or Y. X or Y chromosome. So that will become the sex linked, right? So recessive and dominant. Dominant requires expression of one allele. So to get a dominant disease, you require expression of one allele. To get a recessive disease, you have to have an expression on both the alleles. So both alleles should be diseased in order to get the uh, recessive, uh, recessive diseases. That is the basic first, right? And always remember guys, if you want to have a dominant disorder, one of the parents should be always be diseased. If you want to see a dominant disorder, dominant disorder may one of the female will be always diseased. Okay, one of the parent will be deceased. In recessive disorders, parents might be or might not be deceased. Okay, so that is one point which we all should be aware. So now how do we, how do we uh, see or read the pedigree analysis? All that we will just check this, check now. So in the pedigree analysis, a square box like this is male, unaffected. A square box. Uh, Sharon, we just now finished the discussion of the eligibility criteria for MRCOG1. If you have any queries, you can feel free to ask about the eligibility criteria. So, affected male will be colored like this, black and a square again. Females will be usually expressed as a circle and unaffected will be white affected female will be black in color so unknown sex this rhomboid dead female dead kid dead babies you have to put it like that okay next so this is the basic uh, how do we so if this is a father and mother and mating so this is the line consanguineous marriage you have put it two lines now of then from there, when you give when you give an arrow like this, it's the offsprings. Okay. So those are the most important uh, pedigree symbols which you should know. And uh, so deceased is this. You put a cross. If you have two males, you write it this way. Two females, you write it this way. So fraternal twins are expressed in this manner. Identical twin male, this manner. Identical twin female, this manner. 
okay so now first we'll discuss about autosomal recessive so first i'll explain you how do we how we have to understand these topics and then we will read how to read them that also i'll tell you okay right so now first coming to autosomal recessive disorders so autosomal recessive let's take mother mother is having the disease so let us take mother is having the disease and father is free of the disease then what happens to the children okay so that will be our main uh, uh, how we are going to discuss now okay so mother is having the disease so both alleles are expressed so a a a a a a a a right so when mother has the disease if mother has the disease and father does not have the disease will any children get the disease if mother has the disease and father does not have the disease does any children get the disease so you are going to get for all children you are going to get only one thing what is going to happen it is only the one allele is going to get they all will get only one allele so what will happen all babies will act as carriers all babies will act as carriers no baby will get the disease no baby will get the disease right are all of you are clear with this first graph yes next let us see one more example now so if both parents are deceased if both parents are carriers let us take now both parents are carriers then what will happen so both parents are not deceased because both of them are carriers so both both parents will not show the disease will not show any signs of disease because both are carriers so next what will happen first the combination of aa next combination will be aa yes now what will now what is happening how many how much percentage of the babies are going to be deceased when both parents are carriers yes excellent rasha so 25% of the fetus will be having the disease so 25% of the babies will be affected with the disease whereas 50% will just act as a carriers and another 25% will be completely free of the disease so 25% will be deceased and 50% will be unaffected sorry 50% will act as carriers and another 25% will have the completely free of the disease so this is the pattern what we observe in the autosomal recessive now what i want you to understand in this when so this is how you get the pedigree analysis in your exam so they'll give you just a picture like this and they'll ask you ki uh, try to identify whether it is a autosomal recessive or x linked recessive or autosomal dominant first and foremost the key point which you have to remember is in recessive disorders parent can be not deceased or parent can have the disease but in autosomal dominant you should always see that 
the deceased parent only can transmit the deceased parent can only transmit the disease to the next generation so that is the first point so what is the first point we are discussing now parents are unaffected it is usually recessive if parents are affected and then the offsprings are affected then it is autosomal dominant if parents are not affected then it is usually recessive okay next here it is need not like all generations will have the disease some generations can skip the disease some generations can skip the disease and most important this will be seen in both the sex equally so this will be observed in both sexes equally so it is going to appear in both the sex equally it tends to skip the generations affected offsprings are usually born to unaffected parents right when both parents are heterozygous only one fourth just now we saw the table only one fourth of the babies will be affected right so this is usually seen in consanguineous marriages okay next next we will see the autosomal dominant how do we how do we decide so autosomal dominant autosomal dominant may definitely you should have one parent having the disease and it will never skip the generations and autosomal usually will go equal to the equal to the male as well as female autosomal will usually go equal to both male and female offsprings so let us draw this also let us draw the possibilities for this okay so let us take yes first let us take that mother is affected mother is affected okay so first we are going to draw mother affected so mother is affected father unaffected father unaffected okay so now what will be the combination which we will see so next combination so this is how you have to draw in the exam also guys then only it will be easy for us to interpret and answer so this is the table which will form when you have a mother affected and father unaffected completely so now how much percentage of the babies will be affected 50% very good so 50% of the babies are affected and 50% of the babies are unaffected so there is no carrier story in the dominant right so 50% of the males are and again is it equal in both males and females usually autosomal will be equal in both the generate both in males and females it whereas when you see the recessive disorders recessive disorders you will have this pattern of more going into the male or more going into the female but autosomal will be equal in both male and female okay so this is clear this is about the autosomal dominant we'll do one more example in the autosomal dominant uh, let us take that both parents are affected so what will happen if both parents are affected so what is happening when both parents are affected in order to 75% are affected and how much percentage of the babies are unaffected 25 only 25% is unaffected only 25% is unaffected right 
so this is about the autosomal dominant so what are the rules of the autosomal dominant so how will you identify in the pedigree analysis that whether we are dealing with autosomal dominant so in the autosomal dominant it doesn't skip the generations it will affect all the generations it will affect all the generations right next it will be equal in both male and female it will be equal in both male and female see here so male has given again one female one male is affected so here male is affected and two females so most of the time everywhere it is male and female both are affected so it is autosomal dominant these are the things which we have to take care now coming to the x linked dominant and x linked recessive so first i'll show you the example and then we will understand it better but what is the one rule which you should keep in your brain when i'm discussing dominant parents will be affected or unaffected in dominant affected ha huh. so dominant may parents should be always affected and it does not skip the generations these are the two points which are common now let us take mother is affected again i am taking mother is affected okay and father unaffected first so when mother is affected next this one so when mother is affected and father is unaffected again it is same like autosomal dominant itself so it is more you are going to see the more disease in the 50% are affected and 50% are unaffected right if mother both alleles are affected then what happens if mother's both alleles are affected then all the babies will be affected if both alleles are positive for the mother then all babies will be affected right so x linked dominant x linked dominant usually it will not skip the generations it will not skip the generations and it is usually seen in both male and female and one more very important so if mother is affected and let us take mother has only one gene positive if mother has one gene positive what is going to happen she may give carrier stack child which, which will be carrier for next generation yes so if mother is positive uh, usually dominant may we don't never have a carrier state dominant may carriers are not uh, there uh, but only thing what i'm trying to say is as only one x chromosome is required for the for the male fetus males will be more affected than females because males require only one males get only one x chromosome and if mother is affected so definitely all males will be affected right and even if father is affected father will 100% transmit the disease to the daughters father if father is affected this is important in x linked dominant if father is affected father will 100% transmit the disease to the daughters but can father transmit the disease to sons no no that is what we have to see see if now let us take mother is unaffected and father is affected right so then what is happening daughter will get the disease son is spared next so what are you observing when father has the disease and mother does not have the disease all daughters will be affected and all sons will be spared this is one classical about the autosomal dominant this is one classical point which you have to remember for sorry x linked dominant did you all understand this last point because that is how you will be able to answer for x linked and autosomal otherwise you can't differentiate between autosomal and x linked so see father father will give only y chromosome and this is a x linked dominant disease so father never gives the disease to the son that is what i am trying to say here father will never give the disease to the son 
now let us see this example in this picture so here mother is affected the first generation they are showing that mother is affected so mother can transmit disease to both daughter and son so both are affected so mother can give disease to daughter and son but see here father is affected and father will give disease only to daughters father cannot give disease to the sons because this is x linked dominant disease next coming to the x linked recessive coming to the x linked recessive so always remember recessive may parents need not have the disease it can skip generations and x linked recessive will be seen more often in males and females usually tend to be carriers and uh, it is more commonly seen in males and females usually tend to be carriers let us understand that also how now we am discussing x linked recessive so first i'll discuss mother affected and father unaffected so recessive means how many alleles should be positive for the disease to express the disease so recessive means both alleles should be positive right x y so this is the graph which will happen now i want you people to answer uh, when mother is positive for the disease and son uh, husband is not affected then what is the result which is happening who are getting affected and who are becoming carriers male are getting affected and female are carriers yes so in x linked recessive you will see more disease in whom in x linked recessive you will see more disease in the males because males require only one x chromosome to express the disease whereas females will require both x chromosomes to express the disease so females will act as a carrier and in x linked recessive males will have the disease that's all if you are able to observe this much in the uh, pedigree you will be able to answer okay now similarly again uh, let us see the example of father also let us see the example that father is affected and mother is unaffected then what will happen so for father to get the disease it is only one chromosome one x chromosome which has to be uh, positive so if only father has the disease no babies will get the disease no babies will get the disease and all females will be carriers and all males will be free of disease so remember always x linked disease cannot be transferred to the son from father it cannot be transferred to the sons and fathers will give daughters just as a carriers that's all so i hope you all understood how to read how to read the pedigree analysis so now we will see some examples mitochondrial is very simple mitochondrial will go only from the mother to the sons mother to sorry mother to kids and only mother can transfer the disease fathers can never transfer the disease in mitochondrial dormant mitochondrial traits now we will see some examples for this now we will see some examples okay first and foremost what do you think this is recessive this is recessive because it is not going to the next generations and and it is usually like unaffect uh, uh, previous parent is unaffected so it is recessive so do you think this is x linked or y linked uh, x linked or autosomal who are more affected males or females males are affected males are affected males are affected in autosomal recessive i told you that it should be equal division between both male and female but here you are observing that only males are predominant so is this x linked recessive or autosomal recessive 
excellent recipe excellent recipe understood now simple usually people usually complicate this pedigree analysis as like too much usually we get this in exam i'll tell you what is a simple funda i use for answering this first and foremost you should see whether it is skipping the generations or not if it is skipping the generation it is recessive if it is not skipping the generation then it is dominant then it is dominant, dominant. right then it is dominant next what you have to observe is it following a pattern of like only males are affected yeah only females are affected or is it having equal male and female are equal if male and female are equal then it is autosomal if it is only males affected or only females yes. affected then it is like something auto resist uh, x linked then it is like x linked okay so we'll solve some mcqs like this some some uh, pictures like this so that you will feel confident and you will understand how easy is the genetics so you are all correct this is x linked recessive let us see the next picture okay first first ask yourself is it dominant or is it recessive Dominant. 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 Yeah. No. Dominant. First, we'll just we'll go step by step here. We'll always first ask ourselves whether it is dominant or recessive. So this is dominant because a a parent who is positive only is giving the disease and it is not skipping the generation, so it is dominant. Second, I have to decide whether it is uh, autosomal, yeah, whether it is X-linked. Now, if you see the first picture, male is transferring the disease. is male transferring the disease equal to male and female or is male transferring the disease only to females and not transferring the disease to the females what does this mean x linked x linked yes. yes so male can never transfer male dominant can never transfer the disease to males sons and he'll transfer all the disease to daughters a female can transfer to male and female equal so this is X linked dominant. This is X linked dominant. All of you understood this one. Uh, all of you understood, guys. Right. I'm assuming that you all understood. Okay. Let us see one more picture now. Yes, we were correct. This is X linked dominant. Okay. Again, let us go in the same pattern in our brain. So. uh is this recessive or dominant first answer that much recessive 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 kyunki parents are not affected and it is skipping the generations now is there any particular pattern that father is giving the disease only to daughters or is it like equal both of them are equal affected equally affected equal affected affected autosomal yes so now you became a pro so this is autosomal recessive disease all of you understood now like what i was trying to tell just this if you know how to do, solve these two these are the two key things okay now this is also easy to answer so is this dominant or recessive dominant this is dominant and if you observe everywhere only father is giving the disease only to sons there is no daughter getting the disease so what do you think so, this the is dominant. x linked me father will give which chromosome to the son x or y why why so what dominant is this this is y linked y dominant link. yes so when father is giving disease only to sons this is y linked dominant y linked dominant okay let us answer this one now first it is dominant or recessive dominant 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 now father is giving disease to both daughter and son so mother is uh, so he father is able to give disease to the son also so is it autosomal or is it x linked autosomal this is autosomal dominant this is autosomal dominant so previous question the answer autosomal dominant was correct guys okay this one dominant 
Okay. Uh, this is dominant, right? So mother is giving the disease Excellent. only to sons. Okay, if you're telling dominant, but see this this chart. This chart, this baby is having the disease without parents having the disease. Can a baby have the disease in dominant without parents having the disease? No, this is mitochondrial. Mitochondrial also mother should be affected, no? So this is little tricky. This is little tricky. It is, it is, but this, yes, this is recessive actually because parents are unaffected in this graph. Take this as two separate graphs. Here, this graph, this eight number baby is born to five and six number, but five and six are unaffected. Five and six are unaffected. So unaffected babies giving affected baby cannot be dominant. Okay, that is point number one. Now, so it is recessive. Next point. Here, mother is transferring the disease only to sons. And daughters are probably carriers. So is it autosomal or is it X-linked? X-linked. X-linked. So this is X-linked recessive. Okay. So these are the difficult, uh, these actually are very difficult and usually students go crazy while understanding this topic. So this is how we make it easy for you. And this is the benefit of, you know, picking up the coaching. When we read all this, it becomes very difficult and very confusing. We try to, dis we try to simplify every topic for you. Uh, and uh, we help you throughout this process of uh, your exam, right? So any queries, guys, that is about the pedigree analysis. And I think you all understood the pedigree analysis, guys. So any doubts? I think, Rasha, you joined late. Uh, Rasha, you have any doubts about the... Thank you so much, Aisha. Thank you. So any doubts about the eligibility criteria, you can ask now again. Means then we asking. can pick any generation. Mm -hmm. yes. Like in uh, second generation, father is not giving disease to any child, but here uh, carrier father, uh, carrier parents are giving disease. Means uh, anything we can pick from this or uh, this whole picture to answer. Yes, yes, yes. You have to observe all the generations. You have to see every generation. You have to read every generation. Like here, female is affected. The affected female is giving rise to two affected males. And unaffected, unaffected parents are giving rise to affected male. So you have to read all the generations and then answer. Okay. So Rasha, register now itself. Because, you know, reg after registration, you would require four weeks time. After registration, you require four weeks time for them to confirm your eligibility. After you get the eligibility, you have the booking of interest. You can put the expression of booking of in uh, expression of interest and then you can book. So even if you are preparing for July session, you uh, apply for the eligibility now and start your preparation. It's always better to start early, right? For MRCOG part three, for MRCOG part three, you require four years of complete training of OPGYN. Four years of training. What books to read? There are actually plenty of books to read actually. So normally when, while we are teaching, what we do is, we compile all those books and we try to help you by providing the PDF. And if you are going through that PDF, that's more than enough. But otherwise, the different books to read are... I have two pages. I'll just put that.
so these are the books to read for part 1 just one second where's the paper one yeah so the exam syllabus will be constituting this subjects you have physiology endocrinology biochemistry anatomy genetics micro patho pharma embryology immunology statics clinical management statics revision so these all will be there the topics these are the different books to read so you have almost two pages of books to read that's why i told you know the benefit uh, part 1 you have so much to read actually thank you rasha thank you thank you lavika yes uh, orin you will get the recorded video thank you arin thank you so much i really appreciate that you all liked my session and i'm very happy that you all loved my way of teaching and uh, thank you so much for the love from bangladesh also right so any doubts feel free to ask any doubts feel free to ask and uh, we'll be there to help you our uh, team is also super uh, you know they respond very quick and they really take this matlab very seriously and uh, they try to help every small aspect also so you can see that they are sending you the con contact number also so any queries while you're applying and if you uh, you can always enroll in our in our med exam course and uh, see these are the books which you have to read but it can be simplified by our sessions here so what we do is we read these books and we make a compilation of everything to you and after the compilation it is uh, what we get you we provide you the pdf uh, we make that anatomy session of 8 hours we make the physiology session of 8 hours and we give that to you and if you are in, going through that sessions going through the notes we provided by us it will be more than enough okay so i hope you all enjoyed thank you so much any other doubts feel free to ask and then we'll end the session thank you guys thank you thank you thank you so much right so asma thank you yeah